Hey, this is Morgan in Memphis. Hey, Morgan, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, obviously, want to talk about the uh, VW yeah um, issue. Please. Yeah. So uh, you were talking with Charlie about the Tennessee legislature. We are in the top ten every year, and as far as like dumbest legislatures <laughs> in the country. Um, we're up there in Kansas. Actually, we had an issue in Memphis. Uh, there's a, a guy out in the suburbs that tried to initiate a similar law to what was going on in Kansas uh, with basically banning uh, gays from, you know, uh, having, like, the the wedding caterers and stuff like that could discriminate right. uh, against gays. And um, he was so publicly shamed that he was drew his name from the bill within two days, which was kind of uh, an interesting development. My understanding is in but, Kansas, uh, my understanding is in Kansas, uh, the Senate is not going to take up that bill. The, but I just saw that on Twitter uh, about an hour ago from Dave Weigel, I think. So I don't know if that's the case, but, um, but, but I mean, stupid is one thing, but this seems to have like a real ideological, well, I guess that does too. Uh, but I mean, this is, this is, I mean, well, how are people reacting in Tennessee to this. That's what I'm curious about. Well, I guess, you know, I was going to kind of give you like a little political history, if I could do that, that I think would it kind of help uh, explain why there's such a visceral reaction to unionization in the South. Um, so I guess, you know, you, you can draw this back uh, to, you know, uh, with everything in the South. Uh, when slavery ends, you have this kind of reorganization of society and all these people who were relying on slavery go in, you know, they're agricultural. So they go into the farms and uh, are sharecroppers along with uh, the freed slaves. And I think uh, what happens is the uh, the people who own the farm start noticing a camaraderie developing with blacks and whites. There's a bond forming. And the answer that uh, the, the Southern aristocracy brings in is industrialization in the form of cotton mills. And, uh, and, and what they do is uh, all these able-bodied whites who uh, we're working with blacks in the fields go into the cotton mills and uh, it's very Dickensian. There's no labor standards, uh, but there, the class struggle is kind of suppressed by uh, a racial cohesion and a deference to the local oligarchy that these white workers feel. And, uh, you know, as, as time goes on, like Jim Crow is kind of defined by uh, this this bond of, you know, we are all whites united together. Uh, and, and and the New Deal kind of chipped away at that, and so did, uh, in a, to a lesser extent, the uh, progressive movement uh, of the early kind of uh, 20th century. But, uh, you know, there's always this racial bond uh, that is uniting uh, uh, whites of all classes uh, to kind of stop unionization because what unionization represents in some form is a class struggle. And, uh, you know, this culminates in Memphis in uh, 1968 with the uh, 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 garbage worker right, strike Kansas and Dr. Strike. King's assassination. Um, so right after that, what happens is uh, white labor unions in the public sector emerge. There's teachers, cops, firemen. And, uh, you know, it, what, it, what it goes to show is the, the stakes um, for unionization in the South kind of cut to the core of Republican politics and, uh, you know, their ability to kind of control uh, the population here. So, you know, if, if that's my riff on why I think this is such a, you know, they're such, they're freaking out about it, you know, and they're, they're well, obviously so give me, give me a sense. relationship with them. I think that makes, that makes some sense to me. And, and, and I think, you know, it's also just part of what is now, I think sort of the, 
that's recognizable as the broader sort of Republican project in, in this country and the conservative project in this country. But I'm just curious as like, is this getting a lot of play on the local news? Are uh, what are the local news people saying? Are they are they are they expressing like, can you believe that the state uh, the legislature is doing this? Or is it I mean, what how is it? What is the general feel? I mean, you know, obviously you you have one perspective, but I mean, from your perspective, what is the general feel? Is there are people outraged by this? Are they just not paying attention to it? What is it? Well, yeah, so locally, it's not a big deal. Uh, Chattanooga could be in Oklahoma from Memphis. I mean, it's right. such a large geographic area that like what happens on the eastern side of the state doesn't necessarily uh, make it over here. So uh, locally, there's not been kind of a, a big uh, uproar about it. You know, where I'm seeing it is from national media sources. So right. uh, I don't know. You know, uh, I the the senator is from, Bob Corker is from Chattanooga. He used to be mayor there, and maybe that's why he's interjecting himself into this. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I or like, we don't, Memphis is largely considered to be like Mississippi North kind of, you know, it's not, uh, we're not like, we're kind of ostracized from the state in a lot of ways because for one, we're a blue city, you know, uh, we're a majority African American city and we're fairly progressive because of that. Uh, so we are constantly under attack from, uh, Nashville. Uh, there's a guy named Mark. Morris, who All lives right, well, out in the suburbs here, and yeah. Thanks, anyway, thanks. Uh, uh, he's a, he, th- yeah. well, we got to jump, but thanks for the uh, thanks for the update. Yeah. I appreciate it. Interesting stuff. Appreciate cool. the call.